Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Imana Amawe. Coming up on today's show, Indigens of Zamfara State get free health intervention for a Moroccan, from a Moroccan medical team. Adama 3 program supports victims of insurgency in Adamawa State. And INEC collaborates with the United Nations ahead of the 2019 general election. Welcome to the program. A free medical outreach organized by a medical team from Morocco may have changed the lives of about 250 people in Zamfara State, northwestern Nigeria. The intervention in the health sector provided free surgery and drugs to patients across the state. A team of doctors from Morocco are in Zamfara State for a five-day free medical outreach aimed at providing succor to the less privileged at the outreach, medical personnel attended to patients for various health challenges, including surgery and distribution of drugs for high blood pressure and diabetes. The Empire State sincerely like they need help in terms of health. And also because due to this program, some of the health personnel have been coming to us that we should um, help them because there are some this group that came with uh, diabetes and hypertensive patients they gave us it's really touching when you hear their story challenges like uh, any other place uh, is that of uh, uh, sufficient technical expertise and uh, that is why we cannot underscore this kind of uh, cooperation we are highly talented and well uh, highly specialized people are coming uh, to the state to showcase and also assist us in handling uh, some of our health issues. Speaking to reporters, Professor Drisi Bunzebra, the leader of the Moroccan medical team, says the partnership had enabled the team to provide humanitarian services to the state. We have been working for a long time with, uh, uh, with them and we have done some surgeries from uh, uh, kids from Nigeria, I think uh, six or seven years ago. So this is a, a, a motivation of, of any doctors who needs to do humanitarian uh, uh, missions. This medical outreach service will no doubt improve healthcare service delivery among the people. But observers say more needed to be done by government to provide quality healthcare service delivery to the people who are in their needs of it. Now, victims of the seven local government areas affected by insurgency in Adamawa State are receiving support with agricultural input and livestock by the Fadama 3 program. Presenting the items to the victims of insurgency and the vulnerable in the state, the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry thanked the various NGOs for teaming up with the Fadama 3 in bringing succor to the people. Residents are gradually picking pieces of their lives after the insurgency. They are seeking for assistance from both government and individuals. The agricultural input and livestock by the Fadama 3 program is offering support to victims from the seven local government areas worst hit in Adamal State. The items include fertilizer, chemicals, seeds, spraying machines, and goats for rearing. We have considered all the 21 local governments because the seven local governments actually they are the most affected. But we have the host communities that hosted those seven local governments. To bring help to the needy, there's nothing better than service. It is my prayer that you continue to do it as the Lord gives you strength. For all the angels that you partner with, we appreciate their effort. The farm inputs and livestock couldn't have come at a better time. And for the authorities, this action must not be truncated. We are seriously looking for assistance from all 
those that are well to do. Therefore, this assistance that is being rendered to our people today, I believe will go a very long way in alleviating most of their sufferings. This intervention is therefore targeted at rural farming households who has returned in communities where peace has been relatively restored to start a meaningful and active economic life. The beneficiaries appreciate government for the intervention. We don't expect this type of things to be distributed today, but uh, when we came here, we made it uh, being assembled. The state government and the partnering organizations seem determined to continue to assist affected returnee communities in Adamar State for the next two years. The Benue State Security Council is not taking threats by the leadership of the Mieti Ala group lightly as it seeks the intervention of the federal government to step up security in the state. There are also further calls for the arrest and prosecution of the group's secretary general over allegations that he's inciting violence. Benue State Governor Mr. Samuel Otom says there's a deep misunderstanding between the headsmen and farmers and also announced an expanded town hall meeting to explain the law prohibiting open grazing. We have heard and seen the threat by Meati Allah over Benue State. And they are even going beyond grazing by talking about they are struggling for natural resources in Benue State that they were here before we came here. We want to send this message to them that we will not accept that kind of threat. And the Security Council had to be convened, and we have decided that the federal government, that the acting president of Nigeria, must know about this threat. And action should be taken by security agencies to arrest and prosecute these people for those inciting statements. It is not right. I've already uh, told my security advisor to arrange a town hall meeting that if the herdsmen can come, the, uh, the farmers can come, and other stakeholders, so that uh, we make copies of this law available to them. That law is friendly, and it remains the best option. Globally, it is ranching that is being practiced in uh, livestock farming. Governor of Benue State, Samuel Otom, still on security, the Nigerian Army has secured budgetary allocation to proceed with the establishment of the Nigerian Army Institute of Technology and Environmental Studies. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Toko Burotai, disclosed this in Meduguri, the Burno State capital, after receiving the certificate of occupancy from the state governor for a land where the school is to be sited. <laughs> An elated Chief of Army Staff receives the Certificate of Occupancy to the site of the proposed Army Institute of Technology and Environmental Studies. <laughs> Securing this land in the local government area of Borno State brings the Army one step closer to making the project a reality. We have uh, already gotten the uh, budgetary uh, allocation for this year 2017 which is one of the requirements also and uh, is well appreciated. That is to show that uh, the commitment, commitment of the government also in establishing uh, this university. Without the brick in place, the Army has already laid a foundation for the Institute as a solution center for national development, which is why it will be open to the general public. Uh, this proposed university it's going to be a unique university, a specialized university, uh, in the sense that it's going to be a solution center. It's based on requirements, based on challenges, uh, real challenges, where solutions will be found not only in our strategy, in tactics and operational arts, but equally in science and technology. The Borno State Governor, Kashim Shatima, pledges the support of his administration to the successful takeoff of the school. Education is the key driver of change in every society. And citing this university in Borno is not a little honor done to us. Because of the multiplier effect on the local economy, 
that alone will go a long way because there is a direct correlation between violence and poverty. If this university is set up, it will create employment opportunities for quite a number of our jobless youth in all capacities. The future has been mapped out for the institute, which is expected to metamorphose into a full-fledged university in the coming years. Coming up on the program, Governor Godwin Obaseki of Edo State has been inspecting some road projects, and he says Lucky Way will be completed by October this year.